Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So Jerome Powell from the Federal Reserve just gave his latest FOMC announcement. I think by now you would already know that he kept the rate steady, but that is already well expected by most people in the market. But the devil is in the details. So in this video, we're going to dive into what are the specific things that he mentioned and we're going to predict how this is going to potentially impact the market. So if you're an investor, be it in the stock market or the property world, you want to watch this. Let's dive straight into it. Alright guys, so you can see over here the Federal Reserve, as expected, okay, they have given their blessings uh, to keep the rate steady, okay, so they're going to keep the rate steady uh, at about 5.25% and right now, there's a very big market reaction despite the fact that this is something that was already expected uh, by the broader market, okay, but before we go into that, right, let's just look at just about one quarter ago, December 2023, what was the market predicting, okay? So this was actually from another news outlet in the US that said that they're going to predict six interest rate cuts, all right, into 2024, okay? And by April, as early as uh, this April, just a couple of weeks ago, in fact, the Federal Reserve officials themselves said they were going to cut the rates by three times, okay? Three times. But right now, all right, the possibility is this, ah, uh, if you look at it, we are already in the May FOMC. So that leaves us with only five FOMC meetings. So if they're going to cut rates, there's not even a possibility they can do six. There's not enough meetings for them. And even though the Federal Reserve officials, they themselves said right now, uh, back in early April, they're going to do three rate cuts. But from the looks of it, it looks very unlikely. Okay, Why is that the case? Because if you look at the key points, this time round, while there is no rate cuts, okay, uh, they also lowered their bond selling from 60 billion bond selling to just about $25 billion of bond selling. Later, I'm going to explain more about the impact of this. And more importantly, what Jerome Power did to make everyone very happy is to say that they're going to rule out any rate cuts from here. But the last part of the FOMC, he actually said something that rattled a lot of people. So it was all rosy, uh, to the last part and basically he says something to the tune that of casting a doubt on future rate cuts okay so why is this important because if you look at the federal reserve there's this thing called a dot plot where the different governors in the federal reserve put in their prediction okay on where the monetary policy is going to be where the interest rate is going to be and you can see that in by 2024 2025 and 2026 they are predicting they themselves is going to drop the interest rate accordingly, okay? So this statement of uh, future rate cuts, you know, uh, being in limbo, having doubts about it, really, you know, throw everyone into this array. And that's why the markets initially had a very positive response to this statement, but ended off lower. So later we're going to look at the market. But if we look at back to this diagram over here, we only have five meetings to left. Right now, the consensus is that the rate cut is going to start only by maybe September or even November. Why is that the case? Because Jerome Powell specifically mentioned that he doesn't see enough information, enough data that the inflation numbers are trending towards their holy number of 2%. Honestly, nobody knows where they get this number from, but the important thing is they are not confident. So it is very unlikely they will cut in June. So I think June is already out. So possibly July, but most of us are really looking at about September, November right now. Okay, and there's even talks in the market that this year we might even see no rate cuts, right? Before this FOMC, actually one of the economists actually predicted that there will be no rate cuts this year. So with that in mind, the market reacted very violently the moment Jerome Powell said that there's some doubts about future rate cuts. So if you look over here, what we have is the S&P 500, the whole of last night. And you can see the moment Jerome Powell made his announcement around here, at about 2.30, there was initially a very big spike up in the market, right? The market actually went uh, almost hitting the 5,100 mark, which is around here, okay? So this was seen as a very strong resistance level for a lot of the markets. And after that, the moment he started talking about future rate cuts, having doubts about it, the market just sell off very quickly. And in fact, uh, most of the markets, be it S&P 500, NASDAQ, both actually ended up lower, right? NASDAQ was actually lower by 0.7%. The only index that kind of gone up 
is actually Dow Jones. Okay, so right now you see in the Asia market, the interesting thing is that the Asia market actually held up pretty well, right? So Hong Kong is actually currently still up by two points, uh, two six percent. All right, uh, Nikkei, which is Japan, Japan actually uh almost flat, but you can see there was a very big, uh, violent uh reaction as well. So right now the market is still in limbo. Uh, they're not quite sure what to do. There was a very big elation and then a huge, uh, disappointment after that. But in all this, amidst all this uh, bad news, right, there was one sector that uh, really shined uh, that quite, quite brightly. And that is actually the very hated <laughs> regional banking sector, which is uh, the ETF of KRE. Now, this sector was very much hated uh, earlier on because there was a lot of news about banks going under. Yeah, if you remember Silicon Valley Bank and First uh, Republic Bank. So, a lot of attention were being drawn away from it. And initially, there was also a very big sell-off, right? So if you look at the broader picture, we look at uh, a one-year a one year chart, right? Okay, you can see that uh, initially, there was a very big sell-off of uh, Republic, uh, sorry, the regional banks, right? Very big deal. But since then, the regional banks has actually come back uh, gradually, okay? So I believe this is going to continue to be a trend for this year of 2024, where there's a lot of uncertainty, the market is not quite sure what to do. Um, a lot of people are pulling away their money from the tech sector, right? So, for example, if you look at uh, all the tech stocks, uh, okay, right? All the top losers today uh, is actually mainly the tech companies over here, right? So, if you see that this is happening right now in the market, what a lot of investors do is the flight to safety mechanism, right? They just go to things that are safer, still give them a decent amount of uh, dividend. And right now with the interest rate continuing to hold high, it might be also a bit of positive for the banks as well. So right now, that's why you see KRE uh, had a very big jump uh, last night, over 2.5%. Uh, Overall, I think this is still a very healthy market despite all the bad news because we all know right? A bull market climb on a wall of worries. So do not expect the market to just go a straight line up all the way like this, right? It is never going to happen. In fact, right now what we see is a very healthy market uh, retracement back to the mean, right? So we always see this kind of retracement along the way. And right now it is no different, right? If you look at the MACD level, this is a super healthy Stochastics is really nice and the RSI is setting up very nicely. So I find that right now is a really good time to start accumulating good businesses while the market is having so much uncertainty, okay? Now, for those of you who are doing options right now, it may not be the best time to buy call options because the volatility is really high, right? Uh, but in terms of selling options, that's something that I'm truly looking at right now. Another sector right now that's under a lot of spotlight is actually Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin, after the halving event that took place uh, earlier this April, the market has been selling off, right? So this is also a typical sell the news, right? Buy the rumors kind of strategy. So I would say once the news is being baked in, everybody heard about the Bitcoin halving. Actually, there's not much upside to begin. Okay. But having said that, I'm still a long-term Bitcoin bull. I believe this is something that could potentially blow up to be quite a significant uh, asset class in the world of investing. So I'm still looking at holding and inve investing more, right? Slowly accumulate along the way. But right, of course, this is not investment advice. I'm just sharing with you how I look at the market and how I invest as well. All right, so that's all I have to share with you. I hope you learned a lot from uh, this very short session from the FOMC. Once again, the key thing is that while it's interesting to read all these news, to dissect all these news, but many a time, these are all noises. The main thing that you should do as an investor and as myself is to really invest for the long term, find great businesses, and really just hang on for the right. In fact, if the right gives you a great discount, like moments like this, I would personally take advantage of it. How about you? Okay? All right, so that's all I have. If you like the channel over here, do like and subscribe. And also don't forget to join our Telegram channel. I'll put a link down in the description where this is the place where I share more up-to-date news and anything that I just see in the market, I can quickly send it out in the Telegram group rather than to make a full video and then upload it to YouTube. So if you want things that are more up-to-date, more real-time from me, you can join the Telegram channel at the bottom. Okay, so that's all I have over here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.